So now we're going to look at expressions that include variables. And with that, we need to be able to recognize what are like terms. So like terms should include same variables, same exponents. That's the short way to remember if things are like terms. Same variables and exponents. So for example, 2x and 3y. Those are not like terms because they have different variables. But 2x and 3x, those are like terms. So the idea is that we can eventually add and subtract like terms together. This is like having two apples and three apples. So if we added them together, we'd have five apples. So the idea is that x would be the, this concept of apples where it's the same between the two terms. But if I go 2x squared and 3x, these are no longer like terms because the variables aren't matching. If you think in terms of like distance and area, so like units, so say I have two feet, if I combine that with three feet, then I have five feet. Like I can combine those together because they're the same dimensions. But if I have two square feet and three feet, I can't combine those together because one would be representing an area and one would be representing distance. So we can't combine them together. But if I have two square feet and three square feet, then we could combine them to five square feet. So that's where the exponents need to match up as well. Then what we could also do is start using other variables as well. So like 2xy and 3xy, those would be like terms. And then if we start putting exponents on things, so like 2x squared y cubed, that would be like term with 3x squared y cubed. So same variables, same exponents. But let's say this was 3x cubed y squared, no longer like terms because the variables, the variables match up, but the exponents don't. So these would be not like terms. But 2x squared and 3x squared like terms because same variables, same exponents. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and look at simplifying some expressions, looking for like terms, and then also using those properties that we learned about in that last video. So negative 8 times the 6 minus 4b. Now inside here, inside the parentheses, we can't combine those because they're not like terms. We have just a number 6 and 4b, so because they don't have the same variables, not like terms. So we have to keep those separate. What I can do is distribute negative 8 in. So we're going to have negative 8 times a positive 6. We're also going to have negative 8 times negative 4b. <clears throat> so negative 8 times 6 is a negative 48. And then negative 8 times negative 4b will be a positive 32b. And we can leave it like that. Um, sometimes people like to rearrange it so that the variables first, so like 32b minus 48. Both of those are correct. Because of that commutative property, you can move them around to whichever format you like best. All right. Again, I go looking at the parentheses, but the 7 plus 5x can't combine those. So my next piece is multiplication. Again, a common mistake here is that students want to do negative 8 minus 2. But again, we save that subtraction for the very end. So what we actually need to do is think of this as negative 2 times the parentheses of 7 plus 5x inside, and we need to take care of that multiplication first. So we're going to distribute negative 2 in. So I'll have that negative 8 stays out front, and then negative 2 times 7, which is negative 14. Negative 2 times 5x is negative 10x. And then I go looking for like terms, which will just have the negative 8 minus 14, which is a negative 22 minus 10x. And then we leave it just like that. Okay, here we have two sets of parentheses. So that 5 is going to distribute into the parentheses there. And then over here, the negative 6 is going to distribute. So we'll have 5 times 10x, which is 50x. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 4x plus 24x. And I'm going to go looking for like terms. So 50x and 24x we can combine. Also the negative 5 minus 6 can be combined. 
So 50x plus 24x will be a 74x. Negative 5 minus 6, negative or subtraction of 11. All right, one more example here. We're going to distribute the negative 5 in. We're going to distribute the negative 8 in. So negative 5 times n is negative 5n. Negative 5 times negative 9 plus 45. Negative 8 times 1. Negative 8 times negative 7n, so plus 56n. And then we go looking for our like terms, so anything with n. And then we have just our numbers, 45 minus 8. So negative 5n plus 56n, so that should be a positive 51n. And then 45 minus 8 should be a 37. Okay, so there's some simplifying expressions like we did in the last video. Just now we have variables and looking for those like terms that we can combine. All right, our next piece is to look at evaluating expressions. And with this, what they're going to do is give us values that we can plug in. And my biggest recommendation here is parentheses. Whenever you substitute, try to use parentheses, especially when you're substituting negative numbers. So what I mean by that is in this first case, we have the expression x plus 5, and then we're going to substitute, substitute in x equals negative 5. So where I have x plus 5, where I see my variable x, I'm going to put parentheses plus 5. So you have something plus 5, and then they're telling us to substitute in negative 5, so I'm going to plug in negative 5 into those parentheses. Negative 5 plus 5 is 0. So we're simplifying to a single value there. t squared minus 1. This is a case where parentheses is super important. So where I have t squared, I'm going to have that as parentheses with that exponent of 2 minus 1. So when I substitute in t equals negative 5, I can see that negative 5 is going inside the parentheses, which tells me that's going to simplify to a positive 25 and then take one away, which would be 24. So if we had left off the parentheses there, so if you had gone negative 5 squared minus 1, that would technically be negative 25 minus 1, which is a negative 26, which is way off from the solution that we actually want. So the parentheses there really make the difference so that we know that we're getting a positive 25 out. All right, y plus 3 over y minus 3. So I'm going to have something plus 3 over something minus 3. I'm just putting parentheses there. We're substituting in a 2, so I'm going to have 2 plus 3 over 2 minus 3, which it's going to be a 5 over negative 1, which is negative 5. 43 pi r cubed, so we're going to have 43 times pi and then our variable is r, which I'll put parentheses there. And then we have an exponent of 3. And we're substituting in a 5. So with this, there's a few ways to go about it. First, I'll simplify it so that I'm keeping pi separate. So I'll have pi, and then I'm working with 43 times 5 cubed. So let's go ahead and put that into the calculator. 43 times 5 cubed, which is 5,375. So we have 5,375 pi, and that is perfect for like the most exact solution. That would be it in terms of simplifying. But if we wanted a decimal approximation, what we could do is then take that value and multiply it by pi. So 5,375 times pi, which would be 16,886. Let's get some decimals there too, which would be a 0 0.0605. In terms of rounding, I typically go to four decimal places. Unless it specifies otherwise, that should keep a good level of accuracy. Okay, two more here. Now we're working with multiple variables. So we have p squared q in parentheses, all raised to the third power. So what I'm going to do is I'll have brackets and then p squared, so parentheses squared times q cubed. 
All right, so p is equal to negative 2, so we'll have negative 2 in that first set of parentheses, and that'll be getting squared, and then q is 3, which we'll put into the second set of parentheses. So negative 2 squared is a positive 4, and that's multiplying with a 3, and we're cubing all of that together, so this is going to be 12 cubed, and I'll get the calculator to help me out with that one. So 12 cubed is 1,728. I'll do it. All right, last one here. So we're going to have 4 times m minus n minus 5 times n minus m. And we're going to get some fraction practice in here. Okay, so m is equal to 2 thirds, so I'm going to have 2 thirds for m, there and there, and then for n we have 1 third, so that'll go there, and that'll go there. Okay, so simplifying the parentheses first, so 2 thirds minus 1 third is just 1 third, so we have 4 times a third minus 5 times and then a third minus two thirds will be a negative one third. All right, so that'll be four thirds, and then we'll have plus five thirds, so nine thirds, which is equal to three. All right, so using some of the properties we learned about in the last video, along with this idea of substitution, and really it all comes down to having those parentheses to really help you, especially with the negative values.